Um, Welcome everybody. I'm Samantha Johnston. I'm the executive director and curator at the Colorado Photographic Art Center. And thank you for joining us this evening for our, as part of our Tuesday free webinars that we're hosting during the month of photography. Um, and if you aren't familiar with what's going on in Denver, we have a whole month long celebrating photography with programming in galleries and also because of the pandemic, lots of programming on Zoom. Um, and I'll share the link in the chat um, so people can see more details about what's going on. Uh, we're so excited to have Sandy Carson and Jennifer Yaffe here this evening to join us um, to talk about Haim is Where the Heart Is, photo book publishing with Yaffe Press. Um, and then this event this evening is sponsored by Volkhaus Appraisals. Um, and just a huge thank you to all of our sponsors for Month of Photography, which wouldn't make all of this happen without them. So thank them. Um, and a big thank you to Sandy and Jennifer who are here joining us this evening. Um, if some people were putting in the chat where they're joining us from, if you'd like to do that, please feel free. Um, we will be using the Q&A feature this evening. So if you have questions, um, if you just want to put those into the Q&A and we'll be answering those towards the end of the panel um, or the conversation. And um, I'm going to let Jennifer and Sandy introduce themselves and thanks everyone for joining us this evening. All right. Uh, <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> I'm Sandy, um, Sandy Carson from um, Austin, Texas here. Hello, everyone. Um, originally from Scotland, as you can hear. Um, and uh, I'd just like to talk to you guys about my two books, my two past books I've had out with the Offy Press with Jennifer. Um, we'll probably just talk you through basically the ideas we had about the books and then everything else through the production of the book um yeah thanks again for stopping in i'm jennifer yaffe and i'm publisher you've got yaffe press um sandy and i thought that we um the best thing you know kind of the questions that we most commonly get asked um are about how we started working together so we're going to talk about that um, and we're going to talk about the process of working together, the design process. Um, and when we do that, we are especially going to be um, going through the most recent book, uh, Passing Place, and we have a video that um, flips through and um, we can talk about the design elements and how we arrived at them. Um, and then we also, there was a third thing we were going to talk about. Do you remember that, Sandy? The, the book before Passing Place. <laughs> There's a book that we did before. Yeah, I think um, we could show the video of that possibly if we have time to. Yeah, uh, if we have time, um, we can talk about the design. And I guess talk about, you know, um, I guess how you would go about it if you were a photographer, like through grants or stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah fundraising. fundraising. That was it. Yeah. Um, so, should we start? Sure. Let's do it. Um, so, a lot of times people ask me um, how I select the projects that I um, that I publish and um, about a million different ways. So um, sometimes it's photographers or artists who I've been following for a while, um, for whatever reason, someone um, gave me their name or I saw their work on a website or competition or Instagram and just started following it and was interested. Um, sometimes I uh, find photographers that I want to work with through portfolio reviews. Um, sometimes I get recommendations from other artists. So for example, Sandy recommended um, someone to me whose book will be coming out next year, um, Sarah Wilson. And, um, and sometimes it's blind submissions. So in Sandy's case, he wrote to me um, kind of out of the blue. And when he first wrote, even though um, this was with the cowboy work, even though um, I really loved the work, I had just published a book with a similar vibe in terms of just um, kind of, it was Tara Ray's um, Too Tired for Sunshine. Just this, um, you know, kind of, things, kooky things you find on the street for lack of a more artistic way of saying that. Um, and I had also committed to publishing another book that had a similar feel, um, which was also um, even more 
closely related in that this artist was uh, from another country and was giving a perspective on the oddities of America. So when Sandy first reached out, I said no, because just timing wise, I didn't want to have three books that um, were similar come out um, within close time frame together. And then um, he happened to reach back out again just to check in. And, um, and that second book I had agreed to do had uh, fallen through. And so the timing just worked out. And um, Sandy is awesome. And I knew that I would really enjoy working with him, which I have. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also a big piece of the puzzle for me is um, I tell everyone I have a really strict no asshole rule. Like if we're going to do a book together, we're going to be working together for over a year. And um, it's really important that that is a positive relationship where I feel like um, it's really open and transparent and we're working together as a team. Yeah. So that's how Sandy and I ended up working together on um, I've Always Been a Cowboy in My Heart, which we can go through in a second. And then as soon as we finished that one, Sandy was like, how about we do another book? And I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? Yeah. And um, he had this, uh, this work that he'd been um, kind of building on for years. Um, and he was like, it's family work. It's really personal. It's kind of uh, fraught. Uh, like very emotional. And um, we ended up, um, that was the project I was most interested in at the time of the ones that he was working on. And, and that was the one he was uh, least excited about um, diving into. So we had a lot of conversations back and forth. And um, he'll tell you, I'm sure it was like therapy sessions where I was like, what do you, you yeah. know, what was really going on? And what did, what were you trying to say? And what do you think? And um, <laughs> with all the artists uh, that I work with that I'm thinking about that we're doing a book, um, the thing that I ask kind of ad nauseum is, you know, what do you want the viewer when we make this book and it comes out, what do you want the viewer to think or know or feel or learn as a result of experiencing this book? And that's kind of the, the main, the thesis that we want to keep coming back to. So all of the design choices need to ladder back up to that answer. And all of the image choices and the sequence, you know, all need to fit into that. Um, and so with a project like this, it just, it took us a while to figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, and Sandy, do you want to start the video? Sure. I guess, I guess do you want to add anything to that? Um, I was just listening to what you were saying. Um, but yeah, because um, people always ask me as well, how do you approach a publisher? And, you know, I had um, received a grant for the Cowboy Book initially to pursue it. And, um, I, you know, there was an online list of like, you know, 50 publishers internationally and like, I remember getting uh, Tara's book and I really liked the vibe and I thought I really dig this publisher. Um, so I kind of like, you were one of the first ones I wrote and then I wrote to like 50 publishers and they kind of didn't get any any bites. And um, when you kind of said no, I was like, oh, I've got to figure it out. And then a friend of mine, like I always tell people, you know, get your work in front of good editors because there's a really good editor friend of mine who did a re-edit. And I remember that's like when, when I hit you back with it, there was like a, you know, it was a better, like, concise edit of the work. And then that's kind of when you picked it up. But um, that's kind of how I got it going. Um, but yeah, we could, we could show the video and then we could kind of, let me see here. Um, do you mind if I share? Okay, hold on a second. Um, share. All right. Uh, Doing passing place first, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, go back here. Okay. So for passing place, Sandy <laughs> had um, uh, the backstory is he grew up in this um, kind of industrial uh, herding type town, um, you know, past its prime, and. Um, and had to, there was a lot of violence and he had a violent incident and had to leave um, as a, how old were you? 17? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Is the music too loud over where you're talking? No. Okay. Um, so he left as a teenager and moved to the States to uh, do BMX 
bike racing and left his mother. And um, later as an adult, when he would go back to visit her, he uh, would photograph her a lot. And um, coincidentally, there are hardly any photos of Sandy as a kid growing up in Scotland. Um, and so we talked a lot about this. His mother was from this town, his whole family. And so you're looking at these early photos. Um, can you pause it for a second, Sandy? You can't hear me over his own music, I don't think. Um, so this middle, so we did it in three sections. The first were these early um, historic photos of his family. This middle section is this dark period um, when he was growing up there and the violence he experienced. And he was actually stabbed. That's a newspaper um, clipping from the stabbing. And we're coming up to, that's the shirt with the blood on it in the hole. Um, and so the idea of this section being small is that you, and it tucks into itself, is that you could completely skip that part if you wanted in the book. And you could go from like happy times when the town was doing well and his mom was growing up back to these photographs that he took as an adult visiting her as a way to sort of re uh, claim his memories of the place and of her um, and to kind of override this negative experience that he had growing up because he had a wonderful relationship with his with his mother and so going back there as an adult and photographing really allowed um, him to reclaim his um, his history and his heritage in a way so um, there are a ton of design elements in here. Um, you can kind of see there's some paper changes, there's some overlays, um, there are inserts of these um, Bible covers. These, here's one, these really well-worn covers that um, he found um, with his mom's stuff. Um, she passed away um, a few years ago. And so it starts to move into kind of near the end of her life in these photos. Um, there's, uh, and then the whole thing is meant to resemble a Bible in a way. It's got gilded edges and a leather-ish cover and the, um, the ribbon marker. There's another overlay that um, mimics one in the front that's her veil on her wedding day. And this is the last picture of Sandy and her together where he's in the mirror you have essays and something that's really wonderful, which was Sandy's idea um, kind of near, like close to when we were going to press was to put these notes in the back so that the plate, because they, all of these, um, so many of these images have these wonderful stories. And so he's handwritten a lot of that um, into the back. <laughs> okay i couldn't hear a single word you were saying jen <laughs> for no some worries. reason I, I could just hear you faintly talking over the top of that um that's okay <laughs> i get the gist you were talking about the book um <laughs> figure we out. um does anyone have any questions about the design or how we kind of got to where we did. It definitely was um, laborious. And uh, when I came up with that idea for the little book inside, it was nearly impossible to describe to Sandy. And so I like mm -hmm. made this really terrible paper folded stapled yeah. thing. I wish and then I he sort of got it and then we had to get the designer to get it and then we had to get the printer to get it and when it came and it was right it was a miracle yeah i tried to find that today and i couldn't find it but i do have the proofs that we had and then the the uh, actual samples of the cover and the paper stock and all that kind of marks so i have all that stuff here too um but yeah i mean luckily uh well not luckily but because of covid um I was able to concentrate on this project for like a year, just scanning film, family archives and ephemera for, from like 1995, there was like, you know, photos that I, you know, I had shot or like, you know, archives I had brought back and forth for like 20 years from visits um, home 
to the, you know, from the States to visit my parents. So I had acquired like a lot of family archives and I've just been gradually scanning them. And they got to a point where I had enough to approach Jen with this. Um, and then, you know, basically six months, pretty hardcore, you know, like it, my all my sort of commercial work kind of died off. So I was able to, you know, focus pretty hardcore on this and scan everything. And um, I had actually got another grant to to do this one too. So um, that's how we kind of like got a really wide edit, kind of with both books, we got a real wide edit to Jen and she kind of whittled it down a bit. And then, you know, with this one, we just kind of came up with like three chapters, you know, like Jen was saying there. Um, and that's how we kind of approached that because, you know, it's easy to picture a book when it's just photo, 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 but like obviously Jen makes art books and that's like really told a story much more than it would be just a regular photo book spreads and spreads, but this has been like, you know, it's a bit of a journey going through it all, you know, and um, there's different chapters and eras, you know, like my mom to like me in the middle and then leaving the country and coming back to revisit and spend time. So that's kind of the approach and all the, you know, the religious references and kind of like, they're sort of like, you know, the sort of Bible pages is just kind of like referencing my mom's faith and sort of stuff like that. So um, and there's like four different kinds of papers in the book. Here's, here's the, uh, we kind of had the, the idea for like a, kind of like a, this was a piece of uh, wallpaper in the house. Oh, sorry, a, a photo folder. Um, it's kind of reminded me of the old Spice logo, like my, my dad, you know. Um, but there's like four different kind of paper stocks in here and obviously the overlays and then the gold edges. So, um, yeah. And something that you might not know about um, book design is uh, when, it's, when it's sewn, um, it has to be in signatures. And so like mm -hmm. if you look at the top of a book, you see these kind of loops of paper and usually it's 16 pages each signature. Um, and if you want to make paper changes or have an overlay, uh, it has to be really specific. Like you can have one signature of one paper and then the next signature can be another paper, but you can't do six pages of one paper and then the it has to be 16 and 16. Um, if you wanna have this overlay, it has to fall between two 16 page signatures. Same with like the Bible cover insert. And we had so, and then that little booklet, we had so many different elements. And um, I still feel that the day that I figured the math out on and the sequence out on that, we ended up switching it to 12 page signatures, which is doable, but more expensive because it's non-standard, but I got it to work with 12 page mm -hmm. signatures where everything fell where it was supposed to go. And I mean, still, I think Sandy's the only person that like could understand the level of joy and accomplishment I felt yeah. in that moment. I'm not sure I've topped it. Yeah, I mean. And I've had three children. Still, so that's <laughs> like more of a miracle. This was the fourth child, child right here. Yeah. <laughs> and it is a miracle that some of the pages actually, I, I'm not really the kind of designer to lay that stuff out, but I don't know how, you, you know, it took a while for, you know, Jenna to physically send me a, a handmade copy for me to understand the signatures and where they would line up and what photo would print on the back of like, for this one, like there's like a, this is like a prayer book my mom had. So we, we had like a mock-up cover here and then lay and then the back is like, uh, it's printed on the back there. It's, it's right. really, Wilco do a really good job. They're an amazing printer out in the Netherlands. Um, but yeah, really cool. I wish I had the, um, <clears throat> I wish I had the, um, my stapled thing. Yeah. Oh, this, this is like, this is an example of the, of the book they sent. Um, and there's, this is actually, and there's a little pieces of, um, the so leather to choose leather from. color like they, they were just different um thicknesses so we had to figure out as well the thick how hard the card would be in the the, the actual cover because we wanted to be a little flexible but we didn't want it to be really hard so we got all these sent over um fedex next day you know <laughs> um and this is the actual proofs a full like proof of the book 
Um, and then they actually printed one out a blank as well, completely. Um, but yeah, yeah Sandy was like texting me from a bookstore, <laughs> looking at Bibles, being you know, like, oh, I think the you know little videos like this seems a little bit more flexible than what we were talking about, and and that was in the end when we decided to do the the ribbon. Mm, it was that like was I'm very last minute. Yeah, that yeah, was I'm cool. like emailing wilco in the netherlands like we want to do a ribbon can we do a ribbon they're like it's 200 dollars more and i was like i think i can't remember and sandy and i were like let's do it let's do it <laughs> we've come this far it's got everything else <laughs> yeah they they are really cool and yeah they bend over backwards really there were a few questions that i think are in terms of that design, like, did you hire designers for the design elements? Um, someone else had also asked in that same vein, like, do you work with different designers for different books? Um, are the books you publish printed in the U.S.? Um, I, oh, here we, I didn't even see the questions. Um, I do not print offset in the U.S. Um, so the triptych books that I do um, are printed digitally in their soft cover and they're printed in the US. Um, but all my hardcover offset books are printed abroad. Usually right now, um, Wilco in the Netherlands and a printer in Barcelona. Um, I have also printed in Italy a couple of times and uh, prior to that in South Korea. But um, these I've whittled it down to uh, these two that I'm using now because they just do such a great job with the printing and the binding, which is mm -hmm. a significant piece. Yeah. Um, and designers, uh, I do for most of the books, I do um, all of the initial design concepting. So for instance, like the two books that Sandy and I did together, um, I did the edit, the sequence, the layout, um, you know, and in collaboration with Sandy, kind of a, mm -hmm. what do you, you know, this is where I am. What do you think? He's like, you can't leave this photo out or you, you know, this one, I'm not sure. And so we kind of negotiate those things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do the design concepting. So, the, you know, all of the bells and whistles that we just showed you in that book and, um, and a lot of the cover concepting. Actually, with Sandy's book, both of those, um, he had a strong idea of what he wanted to do for the cover, and we talked that out. Um, and then I have a designer who is amazing at taking all of the crazy ideas in my head and actually putting it into an InDesign file that a printer can um, translate. And um, he's phenomenal at selecting fonts, which I'm terrible at. And he's also great at, um, again, taking cover concepts. It's, you know, I feel like I'm more of a art director and um, he's the implementer. <laughs> um, so, uh, and we've worked together on most books. I have used other designers. Um, sometimes some of the artists that I work with have a designer that they want to use um, sometimes with different types of projects. Um, I'm stronger at doing this type of work for a narrative project and less so for um, really conceptual projects that don't have as much of a narrative element. So for those, um, I usually, I'll either uh, lean on another designer more or um, I've also had consultants like people that um that i think are amazing at designing conceptual books and have them come in um to consult on the project to say like look i think it's this is 80 percent there um but i need you know i'm i've done what i can with it and i need someone else to who's better at this than i am to you know take a strong look yeah. and, and get Tucker's, Tucker's been really amazing yeah, yeah, Tucker has been really amazing. He's so meticulous and like really, really laid back. And I'm sure we really do this guy's head in how much stuff we want him to do, you know, and he's, he's just really gets it. And, you know, he's there's never been once he's actually been bummed and he's always, always been on point, you know. 
like no matter what time of the day you you send him an email at two in the morning and he's got back to you and sent in another proof to like I don't know if the guy ever sleeps you know he's like he's he is amazing <laughs> yeah and he is so laid back which is good because I'll be like I'm thinking this for the cover and he gives me five concepts and I'm like yeah I don't know and he's like okay <laughs> totally but normally great. he nails it he's so great yeah how many copies of the of each book do you print or specifically to Sandy's book that question's come in a couple times Hmm. we printed 350 at passing place is that right uh 350 yeah i think so yeah and um the cowboy book was 500 500 yeah um so we look at some questions here um um and then there's a handful of questions about fundraising financing books which i know is a big question yeah. um, um does the photographer put in the money publisher yeah um like i said i had like grants for both these books so um uh with the cowboy book i had i probably had enough sort of fun funds raised from grants to pay for like uh two thirds of it or something and maybe the same with the second book but um because it was like we we got more we got more printed and stuff like that and there was like some ex you know there was there was a lot of proofing and uh stuff like that i did uh i did a kickstarter on indiegogo um to raise the rest of the money so um that's for the cowboy book for the cowboy book yeah um, not the passing past. place we did a similar thing but just through yeah. the website yeah we did yeah. we did a, a pre-order instead which you know both of them were effective in their own way and um we kind of got enough money to do what we wanted to do um and uh we we, we kind of we you know we came up with different tiers like kind of like made it fun like i made a video you know and we had tiers where like someone get a print and a book or like um you know a t-shirt or something like that so we kind of like we kind of like the puzzle the puzzle yeah the i got that here we actually did a jigsaw puzzle for passing place this is a small t a test version but we did a a 500 uh piece one um we sold a few of those and like people got really mad because they were really there was a lot of black in it and they couldn't <laughs> fit the words as the, the pieces um but yeah, we we did really fun stuff like that, you know, um, just to get people, just to get the interest, you know, and um, the cowboy one, did, you know, that was that was a good one, he, like you know, to to do as a Kickstarter, it was really fun, you know. This book was more personal, and I thought, oh, you know, you know, I had I had just about enough money to do it, and um, we did a a, a pre sale on the website, and that 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 kind of got us breaking even there. But um, I just didn't really, I felt like it was such a personal project and I didn't, it was hard enough for me to put the book out. So like thinking, you know, let's do a Kickstarter for this really personal book during COVID and, you know, lockdown. I didn't want to ask anyone for any money, you know? So we just kind of sold like a hundred books as a pre-sale and uh, that, could, that kind of topped it off there, you know, for, for the finances. Yeah, in terms of um, someone answered the asked the question about um, does the photographer pay for the whole thing? Um, there are a lot of different business models for photo books. None of them. Uh, well, that's not true. It's a it's an expensive thing to do um, to make and to publish. Um, I was telling Sandy earlier, like the other day, that I think I only lost like five thousand dollars last year in Yaffe Press. Like I just got my tax return set up and I was like, oh my God, it's amazing. Uh, this is my like really expensive uh, second full-time job. So, but um, which is also why I adhere very strongly to the no asshole rule, because if I'm doing all of this work to ideally break even, um, I better really like the people I'm working with. Um, so the model that I do, and this is, um, just something that I thought a lot about. Um, so it's really important to me, the collaboration piece. And so the artist and I are both 
um, contributing to the production of it and we are splitting the profit 50 50 for the entire print run so um, you know we're uh, the does the photographer is typically paying the hard cost to produce it um, and so that's why when we decide to add ribbons and you know other bells and whistles yeah. kind of at the last minute it's a decision that ultimately comes down to the artist because that's going to affect the amount of money that they're putting in um, but i'm covering all of the soft costs like design and order fulfillment and distribution and um, you know, my time and book fairs and PR and all of that. So we're both, um, you know, I'm not charging the artist for all of those types of things as well. So we're both contributing on the front end and we're both um, splitting the profit such yeah. as it is on the back end. I think it goes, you know, it's 50-50 for all of it. You know, you're, you're collaborating, you're designing it together, you're uh, having therapy together. <laughs> You're uh, paying for it, designing it, and, you know, distributing it, marketing it, you know, all, all of that, you know. Um, someone's asking here about um, if a photographer's social media follower count uh, popularity factor in making a book for a publisher. Um, I would say no. I mean, I think that they, it depends on the project. So... There are, there's so many different um, variables. Like it's awesome if someone already has a big following, um, that's great because that's more likely that um, more books are gonna sell. It might affect the print run, um, you know, how many copies we decide to make. Um, and uh, also, I mean, there are some books that just um, are easier to sell. Um, you know, the cowboy book is kind of more mass market than Passing Place, um, which affected the print run. Um, I think even if you have all of the money raised to, to make a book, I still think doing um, some sort of pre-sale, whether it's a crowdsourcing platform like Kickstarter or um, on your own website, um, that's the best time to sell the book. You know, you're like building momentum and it's a good way to get the buzz out about it before it releases. Um, I don't know. I can't say that I, I couldn't tell you if I have ever seen how many, how many Instagram followers Sandy has. I appreciate that he posts a lot of stuff about the book on Instagram. <laughs> and it's kind of part of, again, like, Splitting the profit is the other way that we hold each other accountable to both working hard to sell the book after. Um, some models uh, give the artist a certain number of books to sell on their own. Um, as you know, in um, like the artist contributes money in the front and then they get a certain number of books to sell. Um, I didn't want to do that because I, I don't want to work with the artist for a year to put this book out and then compete with them to sell the book. Um, I'd rather us kind of keep at it together. And, and again, brainstorming, doing yeah. things like this or exhibitions and book sure. and stuff. Yeah. That's, that's half the battle. Like when the book comes out, you don't just like, be like, okay, we got 300 books. So like you want to, you want to, you know, get people interested and actually look at like a cool piece of artwork that you made, you know, um, which it is. And it's been different this time too, because with the Cowboy book, we, um, you know, as soon as this is done, you know, there's, we both work on like PR kits and send them all out to um, magazines for reviews, you know, so it's just a snowball. It's like, we need reviews to get, pick up some traction about just some buzz about the book and then, you know, galleries, kind of what, you know, like you guys, we can, we can do talks. Like before it was just, um, just hitting up galleries, you know, and then there hasn't been any gallery shows. So um, I did have an opening in a, a gallery in Scotland, which um, premiered uh, the work and it was like a virtual gallery. It was really nice. So really thankful for that. Um, and you guys doing all these talks because it's, it's really, really nice for the photographers to, you know, just, chat to people about what they're doing and get the work out there and stuff um but uh yeah it's just it's just kind of go time when the book comes out you don't just sit sit around and be like right i've got books you get you kind of kind of got to do the work too yeah um, you're gonna have to it's good but i've wrote 
just to get nice relationships with people and yeah it's really nice yeah someone asks is there marketing beyond the website yeah uh, and what the photographer does so um we sandy and i both do outreach to you know different people that we think might do events and things like that um I recently hired an assistant who is amazing and he um, helps really works with a photographer to do um, press outreach and um, which is awesome because it just frees up more time for me to work on the yeah. front end stuff for the books um, and book fairs um, when, when those were a thing were really great because even if someone doesn't know the artist, just to be able to stand in front of the book and hold it um, is a great way to sell it. And, and also just something that I think is important. There's part of, you know, part of the 50, 50 thing is I feel a really strong obligation to help the artist get the work out. Um, so a, doing a book is expensive and it's time consuming. And um, a large reason that artists do it is for the exposure. And so I really take that um, responsibility seriously and make sure that we do a really strong press push that I do book fairs, um, even virtual ones this year. Um, and then also uh, I work with a distributor, um, which is new um, in the last six months. Um, and that is a, an enormous expense and hassle. <laughs> However, you know, I want it, I think it's important um, for the artists to be able to get their books in libraries and bookstores and Barnes and Noble and um, in places that if you don't have an international distribution. So if you don't have a, set up with a distributor, um, you can't get that. Yep. And how, can you talk a little bit more about kind of like marketing and marketing the book, especially like with COVID, you know, I, you know, I know you spoke about book fairs and I know like we've, I've been at SP, at Society for Photographic Education, different conferences where you can have a table and like, it is nice. You get a different feeling when you can kind of walk up and look at the books and kind of, so how has that changed, I guess, in the last year for you guys? Um, I mean, I, it's just really tough for people to, I think, just the physicality of a book, you know, you can't, you know, you start a video and it's, you know, that's the best sort I can do, or, or take some really nice pictures of it and post them, but it's like actually holding a book, you know, I just love photo books, you know, like someone's asking what's the motivation they want for wanting to see your work published in a book, in book form, because I love photo books and I collect photo books and, um, they just current, they just always inspire me to to shoot and make projects um, of my own, you know. Um, but um, yeah, like Jen saying, like you go, you that part's lost for a minute. Going to the book fairs and actually picking the book up because that's kind of like what we, the you know, um, someone else was talking about. Uh, it was interesting that the cover of this book, you would never know there was photos inside it because it looks like a Bible or whatever or. The description um but you know jen obviously knows what she's doing here and she was like i want to make books that someone sees on a table you can pick up I'm like what the hell is this cowboy book you know and we we purposely didn't put like the usual photo on the front of a book because that just gives it away you know you want a bit of intrigue and like anticipation so i think that's kind of lost for a minute right now but once we get back out in the world and we get you know there's book fairs and People can go to bookstores safely and all that. It's going to change a little bit. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, um, I mean, people are still buying books. I think we're all stuck. Yeah, up and we want exactly. To look yeah, at. That, that's a good thing. I, I know I've bought a lot of books during the last year. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. <clears throat> We got here. Someone else had asked to kind of the typical cost for a book project of this size. Uh, <laughs> standard answer. I um, mean, it, it's not cheap, and you know, uh, most you know, I've had a publisher before, Jen, and it was round about the same price. So, like, not everyone's trying to undercut each other. You know, I know some book publishers are really, really, really expensive, but um. 
you're kind of looking at sort of the same price for publishers, maybe photo publishers. I'm not really sure, but once you, you know, there could be a standard price. Like I've put books out in my own label by myself and they cost an absolute fortune to get paid to make over here for a limited run. So, um, you know, if you, you know, you could do, you know, if I was, I, if I was going to do like a, a run a hundred books, it'd be like, with a hardcover, it'd be like five grand or something, you know, and that's kind of, you know, that would be, you wouldn't make a penny, it'd be $50 a book, you know, so um, I'd say at least you're starting at like 12 grand, at least for any kind of publisher to print 500 books that didn't have any bells and whistles. Jen would be able to sort of, you know, round about sort of, uh, I don't know, it's, a, it's costly, you know, yeah. yeah, I don't think um, the design elements have everything yeah. to do with the cost that Not I really. yeah. and the size, um, like the physical size, the number of pages, um, the cover treatment, all yeah. add a lot. I um, I don't think, I think on the high end, um, the most, the most expensive books I've made were like just under twenty thousand um, dollars and that might be and again the print run makes a difference too and so since i don't have any sort of set formula of like i always do this size or you know this print run or whatever these design things like it's completely different for every book um yeah. you know and and some uh publishers don't um like they absorb a lot of that cost, which is awesome. If you can, you know, get Steidl to do your book, you should absolutely do that. Um, and then, you know, and then there are other publishers that charge a huge, huge premium for using them. Like I've heard people get quoted $35,000 or $45,000 yeah. is a just, whole lot of money. It depends, yeah. I mean, I, I put a book out before Jen. Um, and it was like thirty-three thousand dollars, you know, and that was that was double amount of copies, and I did like a record with it as well. So I had, you know, there was a lot of production in the record that came with it, and there was like a, you know, there was like a like a memorial kind of like a kind of like a uh, tribute bracelet. It was like it was it was a lot of stuff going on, and that's you know that that's. I about killed myself doing a Kickstarter for that one. <laughs> so never again. But um, but, you know, it's, it just depends on what you, how far you want to and take it. And it depends on the model too. So like the publisher that Sandy used before didn't do the split. You know, the both contribute and both get you know money on the back end. So you know, if you're also paying for the soft cost of the publisher, then it's going to be more money you know if you're paying for design and order you know all of that stuff that i said um but again it's there's no one right publishing model by any stretch and it really just depends um kind of what feels best for you yeah or get, so you know. people are talking about you know the years of labor and uh, there's that me not and this is one of my this is my oldest friend from scotland piping in here um <laughs> you, you know the introduction to this book yeah, right here, Alan. Thanks, Alan. But um, yeah, it's it's just really easy to get carried away with it, with you know making a book. You just um, you're like, right, I want to do fifty pages, and then before you know, it's a hundred pages, and you're like, I want to do a soft cover, and you're like, well, I'd like a hard cover, and you're like, you just dig yourself into a bit of a hole, and you're like, well, just raise the rest of the money with a Kickstarter, and come up with all these other ideas to to pay for it. But um. Yeah, I mean, if you're, you're spending at least probably a decade on each book or, and it's just a lot, you know, before that you're spending thousands on film and scanning and- Yeah, it's expensive being a But it's so rewarding, right? So rewarding. <laughs> <laughs> and I think too, to the, you know, the relationship, the relationship with the, you know, the artist relationship with the publisher and vice versa, you know, you're, to your point, Jennifer, you're spending a year, you know, building and can, and creating this book out of work that has, you know, been made over, you know, it's taken time and 
you know, to your point, say like shooting film or scanning or all those things. And so there's so many yeah, elements I mean, that I think are important for photographers to consider about. Sure. Yeah. I mean, both those books were like shot on film, like the first one, but all of it was, and then it was like 98% of the second one. So like we spend the six months of your own time and with that scanner back here, you know, on the light table, just looking at it and, you know, weeks of stamping tools to get, you know, but that's, it, you know, I don't really care if it's film or digital, but that's just kind of yeah. how it's working. But, you know, you've got all that taken into consideration, I guess. Um, did you want to see the other book or do you, how are we on time? No, we have plenty of time. Yeah. Hold on a second. Uh, so a funny thing, well, I think it's funny. Sandy might not think it's funny about yeah. this book is it had a different title and I would say I kind of strong arm half my artists into changing the title on their body. <laughs> and this is no <laughs> exception um, because what was it called before? It's called I'm New Year. I have a copy here. Right and I was like that's yeah, not that memorable and he's like everyone knows it as you know and I, every single time I would talk to him about it, I was like, people don't remember that it's called I Am Here. He's like, it's not called I Am Here. I mean, you are there. He's like, it's not called that, you know? And so we were going back and forth. And then um, there's one photo in the book where this man is looking out on the Grand Canyon and he, on the back of his t-shirt, it says, I've always been a cowboy in my heart. And I was like, that's the title. I was like, I'm just going to drop that right there. And Jen and said, you. that would come to it on your own that's really good <laughs> but um yeah because i had a show already before it so i thought oh no you know people are going to see this same work and have a different name you know it was just kind of like you know if you put a record out in a one country that was a different name in the next country you know um but i did get one made up here since it's gonna oh, it's really hard to see but um yeah there you go <laughs> Because the book before that was called We Were There, and then this one was going to be called I'm You Here, so people would probably get you know mixed up. But um, yeah, but that was Jen's story. She loved to rub in my face because I, I really didn't like didn't like the title. It took a while. I was like, ah. I told my wife I was like, my publishers want to change my book name, you know, and she's like, well, let me see. It. And she kind of was into it, and I, I did, I did, you know. Referring to the photos and the, the actual context of the book, it, it fits much better, I reckon. Um, you want right, to the well, video? Sure, we'll blast the video. Yeah. I probably won't hear what you're saying, Jen, if you want to, if you feel free to talk smack over it because I can't hear you. <laughs> is um, there music on this one too? Uh, there is, but um, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, could I, I think in the bottom right, you might be able to turn the volume off on the music in the video. On a Vimeo? Mm -hmm. Let me see. I'm not sharing yet, am I? Uh, mm, I actually don't know how to do it. Uh, sorry. Someone asked, does the artist receive any books or buy books? Um, the artist, in the contract that we have, the artist gets uh, 25 books to use as personal copies. And they can buy additional books at um, like the wholesale price if they want. All right, let's see what we got here. Can you guys, can you see it? Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see what we got here. Um, so this uh, book is about uh, Sandy coming to the US and um, he happens to see the weirdest things as you'll see in this book, like every picture, it's like, how did you come upon that? Um, and so we wanted it to be kind of like a travel log in a way. Um, and so you'll see when he, is flipping through that we have these postcards in there. Um, and they are, there's one. Um, so we decided to take some of the weirder photos and create post like fake postcards out of it. So the image would be on one side and then on the back is um, 
what it would typically look like the back of a postcard. And Sandy has handwritten something clever to his family back in Scotland about what he's seeing. And the towns that we uh, selected are really small and random. And you can see, um, and I'll have Sandy talk about like the stamps and the, um, the iconography on that is all stuff that um, he and Tucker, the designer collaborated on and created to make them really look like real postcards. Um, Oh, I love these photos so much. So there's another one, camels in gas stations. This was a really fun one to edit and sequence. And then um, in the middle of the book is an actual postcard that you can pull out and send if you want. And that's coming up. There it is. That's the photo Jen's talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, the paper in this book is amazing. It's really thick and it's uncoated. Um, I love it. I love that, the turtle with the 25. <laughs> Got a funny story about that picture. Yeah, and the handwritten plate list that we scanned to make it look like a journal. There it is. Uh, <laughs> oh. Sam, um, did we give this um, the free shipping code? I did not give the free shipping code yet. I'm going to put it in. It's Sandy Ships, right? <laughs> yes. With the ships. ships. Like on the cover of the book, a ship. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, so for any of the viewers, it's yeah, a, I, I actually pulled, I pulled these out for a minute, but these are some of the mock postcards that I made. Um, some of them that actually didn't make the book and some did. Um, as far as uh, the little towns. Um, so the, uh, in the book, like I came up, Tucker, the designer, or, or Jen, I, I don't know who came up with it, but we, we had this idea that we should uh, include postcards. I have a giant collection of like 70s postcards and I kind of wanted to 
sort of include them in the book in some way. So we kind of just picked, basically, I had, the, you know, a bunch of journal entries in all these little towns that I went to and road trips. And, um, you know, we, we had the idea that I could just be virtually sending my parents um, postcards from the road, but they were like from like non, non-destination kind of like anti-tourist postcards. Um, like the smallest town you could you could think of, we would we tried to like imagine if there was a postcard that was actually from there and um, the kind of quirky like photo I, I shot. Um, and in the in the book, there's um, we spent forever and ever making these, but there was um, let me see if I can find one. So um, the idea came from the um, I don't know if anyone's seen the Griffin and Sabine books from back in the day um they had actual like letters and postcards in them that you could pull out um and i named my daughter sabine so i'm very familiar with the set of books and when we started talking about this you know how could we incorporate this travel and this road trip thing and sandy was like it'd be cool if we had an actual postcard and then we had this idea to do these to mm-hmm. create these fake ones along the way yeah it's kind of be like um inspired like when I'd, I'd be on the road somewhere totally random and phone my mom like every Sunday and it would just be the, she'd be like where are you and I'd tell her try to describe where I was if it was in the desert or some big city or something she's trying to get her head around it but there's um this one's for like Grand uh, Grand Prairie Texas just this little town, uh, town outside of Dallas um, uh, and it's just a little journal entry here but we have this was, um, so we kind of took what year it was. I think this was two, oh, 2014, you know, and it has like you know, the population count of the, of the town. Um, and we actually had researched what stamp was available in 2014 there. And then actually the stamp from like a local post office and an airmail, like wh- whatever was current that year. And then these, these little anecdotes and uh, graphics or stuff I shot that were out with the actual picture of the, the small town. So that's kind of the, the theme running through it, really. Um, but yeah, those were a nightmare, but worth it, you know. Yeah, you guys did such a good job with this. Yeah, it's great. Someone um, also asked what type of contract or agreement is signed before a partnership begins between an artist and a publisher? Firstborn. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do a full publishing contract, so it's like six pages long and it's very legally and I don't really understand most of it, but, um, it basically, and it takes a minute to get to it because, um, it has the, the cost and we don't know what the cost is going to be until we know what at least some ballpark design specs are going to be. So it's this whole, like, but we don't want to get too far into working together before we sign a contract. So it ends up being this kind of chicken or egg thing. And, um, and I generally uh, have started doing it where it's just, it's basic design specs. It's like, okay, we think it's gonna be about eight by 10 and this size and this, um, you know, and I can give a ballpark figure. And then if we need to modify it, which we always do kind of down the road when, um, when everything gets more uh, finalized. Than we do mm-hmm. great alan wants to know what the funny story about the tortoise is i knew you would ask that um <laughs> so do you get in scotland we say tortoise we don't say tortoise by the way um <laughs> but um also so that picture was i was uh in this neighborhood looking for my friend's house i hadn't been in ages and i was sort of circling around and i was like saw this tortoise coming down the road towards me and I was like oh my god what what is this thing doing in the middle of the road I was like I gotta get it off the road and I snapped a couple of pictures of it and I was following it and then it turned around it was going up this hill and that's where the one I shot the one with the, like the, the speed sign the speed limit sign and I was like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna follow this tortoise and see where the hell it's going so I was following it around and then someone came out of the house and they were like oh my god what, what's this what's this what's this tortoise doing and i was like i don't know i've just been following it for the last 10 minutes and they're like i bet i bet it's from that that house over there and i went and then she went and knocked on the door and the, the guy came out and he's like no that's not mine it's not mine and they're like what do you mean there's a 
this giant, like, there's only one person in this street that surely has one of these things. And the guy was like, no, this is not mine. And he's like, mine's is back here. Here, look. And he, he opened the, the, the gate to his back garden and there was another giant one. And this one, like, just walked in there. And then all of a sudden I hear a neighbour shouting, hey, that, that's, that's my photo. That's my photo. You know? <laughs> And I was like, well, it come escaped? on. So, so, so they ran they they ran in the backyard to, to see what was happening. And like the two of them just met and they were about the same size and they were huge. <laughs> and and it was just like this weird Tinder date or something for like tortoises. Like the one <laughs> the one was like really really aggro and it like flipped the other one over and it was just like really aggro. And like the neighbor was like, Oh my god, what are you doing? Man? And it just it was a bit of a domestic, you know, and it was just really funny and they became friends about well, the neighbors. They were like, I didn't know you had one. Like, I didn't know you had one. And it was, I was like, all right, see you later, you know. And that's, that was it. The love match. Yeah. Thanks to you. Well, we have a few more questions coming in. And if anyone else has more, please throw them in the Q and A. Um, how many books do you work on at, a, at the same time, Jennifer? Or is it one at, one at a time? Do you set a goal for a certain number of new books per year? It is not one at a time. It is many at a time. Um, and fortunately, like I said, I um, just uh, started working with this assistant. Um, Rich Joseph Facoon, his work is amazing. He's about to put out a book with Falline Press called Black Diamond. Um, and he has really freed me up to uh, focus on the front end stuff, which I, all the design and um, working with artists initially. Um, so it kind of works kind of where, um, so like in this case, Sandy and I are doing all of that early work and the editing and trying to figure out what we're trying to say. And then we get it probably 90% of the way there. And then we loop in Tucker, the designer, and then Tucker and Sandy start talking really technical things and, you know, does, um, the fonts and the, and I'm giving feedback, but I'm really just tracking at that point. And I'm, you know, when there's an opinion needed, I'm interjecting, but a lot of times it's like talking about scans and color separations and all of the really detailed stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when the book is um, getting close to arriving, um, we loop Rich in and he helps a lot with the presale stuff um and the details around that and um and also the press outreach and all of the follow-up so um so because of those people i'm able to do more projects than um i was doing before however um do i have a goal uh my goal is to do fewer books than i have been doing um the problem is there's so many problems but like i just fall in love with work and i fall in love with artists and i don't want to say no because i get really excited about the project so um i just agreed to do i think three more books um because i'm a psychopath and um but i'm also kind of saying to some like okay this this is going to be fall 2022 this is you know like there is only but so much to do and or so much i can um put on my plate at one time and also um working with the distributor they need to know the titles a year in advance of them coming out which is not a way that i've worked before um so that has been that has put some parameters around things that I'm not, um, not used to. So nice along too many books is yeah. the answer. And, uh, Jennifer has a full-time job and three kids too, which is That's true. insane. And that is insane. putting all these books out and having a extended family of weirdos, uh, she works with <laughs> that text her all day, night and day talking about color separations and photos and weird stuff i don't know how she does it yeah <laughs> um and i started a podcast because yeah and i do a podcast well, that, so just, so just do that you know you don't have to research just yeah yeah rich also helps with the research thank goodness but <laughs> it's yeah you know it's a lot <laughs> And then one last question uh, that's come in. Curious to know how long uh, did you shoot the project, Sandy, to make it ready for the book? Um, and then in your experience, you have a number of images that you should 
do you have a number of images that you should have to make a comprehensive book? Um, and then what factors in deciding the book orientation and size? Hmm. Um, that one was like, the cowboy book was like 12 or 15 years of work. And then the other one was, goes back to like 95. So it's like 25 years, but most of it was, um, there was probably a gap. So I would say 2000, um, I started really getting the project together. So it was probably 16 years for that one. Um, uh, I don't know how many um, numbers to make a comprehensive book. I mean, depends on the book. I mean, Marcy on Palmer's book. book only had like 24 images in it. Um, and we paired it with writing and um, it was meant to be small and meditative. Um, I think it's just as many images as you need to get to that that end point where yeah. the viewer has the experience that you want them to have. Yeah, I if mean, you want, like breathing room or anything, if you want, you know, some people just can't get enough. They want a photo on each page, but I think it's, it needs a little breathing. Um, yeah. Uh, and then the orientation and size, um, again, has to do with the subject. So mm -hmm. Like we wanted Passing Place to be smaller because we wanted it to feel more intimate and more like a Bible also. Mm -hmm. um, I love, uh, the cowboy book is eight by 10, I think. That's my favorite mm -hmm. size because yeah. it feels really, to me, it feels really good in your hand, but it's still, but it's large enough that you're like getting a good um, sense of the images. Yeah. And also, I have to like seven by nine, so. Yeah, and now, um... It's just really insane to ship a book over, you know, like a lot of my friends in the UK get bummed because before we had the distribution, you know, no one could afford the cowboy book to ship it over because it was like 25 or $30 just to ship it over there when the book was 50 bucks. So someone's got to, you know, pay $80 to get the book over there and it's kind of a nightmare. So, I mean, yeah. going forward, hopefully the, the post sort of, lightens up a bit otherwise everyone's going to be making books that are this big so they can ship them over <laughs> <laughs> you know but uh, that, that does suck that part great uh, someone asked the name of the podcast i thought i, I put it in there Thanks. i got you okay. sent the link <laughs> um but yeah anything else uh, yeah, are there any other questions? Um, I wanna thank uh, Sandy and Jennifer for joining us tonight. And if you're interested in purchasing Sandy's book, I put both links uh, to Yafi Press and we do have that coupon code um, for free shipping in the chat. Um, so if you're interested, you should check it out. Um, they're beautiful books. It's, Jennifer does a really nice job. Um, but yeah, just thank you for sharing, sharing that experience. I think it's important to hear. I think so much, you know, that there's um, ha what's happening, how it happens, how how getting a publisher, mm -hmm. how that whole process comes together. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Um, for interest. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks everyone for joining us this evening. Uh, have a wonderful night and it was great to see you both. Jennifer, I'll see you this weekend at the portfolio reviews. That's right. <laughs> Driving out there, Jen, that's brave and small. <laughs> uh, it's all right. on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna Zoom ski also. Yes. Zoom well, ski, okay. that'd be good. Is that a, isn't that a device for that? Like a, like a VR? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we had one last, someone that has the best way to reach you, Jennifer. Um, yeah, through the website is a, the that's emails good. reach me. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, thank you both. And Thanks, everybody guys. have a good evening. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.